Well, Donald Trump is touting his meeting on Monday with black clergy as a big success to CNN. I thought it was an amazing meeting. But lately, that meeting has taken on a slightly different tone. Now, much of that bad press largely stems from Trump's premature announcement that he secured the endorsement of all 100 pastors at that meeting, an announcement that's said to be the result of a simple miscommunication. That's according to Pastor Daryl Scott, the organizer of that highly publicized meeting. He's here with us in studio on Skype and ready to tell us all the details of that closed press meeting. Some of the pastors are endorsing Mr. Trump. Others, other of the pastors are undecided. There might have been one or two that have uh, stated that they had never had an intention on uh, endorsing Mr. Trump. But the miscommunication was on my part. This originally began as a small meeting, and all of the participants in the small meeting were planning on endorsing, and I communicated that to the Trump campaign. Are most of these pastors former Obama supporters who are now turning to Trump? Is it about his message? Is it him? What is it that has making this uh, movement go in this direction? I really believe that Mr. Trump garners interest from all political parties and all American citizens. I mean, he's a polarizing figure. At the meeting, I said, everyone says that Donald Trump is a divider, but actually I look at him as a unifier because no other candidate would have had that many African-American pastors from all over the country. What kind of uh, uh, numbers does this represent? You get 100 pastors in a room. I mean, is this something that might actually move the needle in terms of black support, whether it's in the primary or if Donald Trump becomes the nominee? I think it will, because watch this. Blacks are not aware of the fact that the Republican Party has probably done more in the history of the United States to advance uh, civil rights than the Democrats have ever done. The Republican Party's uh, um, party is the party that introduced civil rights legislation as far back as 1871, guaranteeing equal rights for all. There have been some very notable racist Democrats. George Wallace was a Democrat. Uh, Bill and Hillary Clinton belonged to a country club that denied oh, access to blacks. Al Gore Sr. voted against the Civil Rights Act. I mean, when you go down the line, even Joe Biden said that Barack Obama is the only clean African-American to ever run. He never got hit in the media for that. You know, he never got held accountable for that remark. They would have nailed Donald Trump. Can you imagine if Trump said that? Woo, forget it. Pastor, I just have a quick question. Um, you talk about Donald being a unifier and not a divider. Uh, on what stance do you guys, what do you agree with? When I first met Donald Trump, I met him, it was a non-political meeting. When I first met Donald Trump, it was for the purpose of prayer. It was a behind-the-scenes meeting. I'm considering, this was once again almost five years ago, he said, I'm considering um, running for president, and I simply want you guys to pray for me that God gives me wisdom and leads me in the right direction. That's all it was. It wasn't a long meeting. And in fact, in that meeting, I went in that meeting with preconceived notions, and I challenged him face-to-face -face about the allegations of racism. The one thing I liked was when he responded, he said, I'm probably the least racist person you ever want to meet, and I work with people in all walks of life. I employ people in all walks of life. I couldn't do what I do and be a racist. But what I liked was he did not go out of his way to convince me he wasn't a racist. Now, Pastor, this is, this is not the Donald Trump that you hear about in the media day after day, for sure. We'd love to have you back. All right. All right, thanks. We'll talk soon.